Hey, Kevin, what are you doing? Oh, we're gonna poke a hole in a piece of metal. I'm making a, a fountain for a commission. And this is the base plate. So the first thing I gotta do is cut a little three inch hole, a little three inch hole. So I was gonna use the mill and this um, bimetal hole saw blade, you know, a hole saw, and just right down through that three ace plate. So you're probably wondering, why is he using the mill? And that's a really good question. The reason I wanna use the mill instead of the drill press is because of the low speed. I can turn this all the way down. You know, it'll be running at about 100 RPM, where the slowest my drill press will go, I think, is about 1300 RPM, which is way, way too fast to drill you know, through thick plate with these little hole saws. You'll just burn them up. You'll just overheat them, you know, lose the, lose the sharpness in the teeth, and then you're just gumming it to death. And I like the fact that I've just got you know, a nice big table to clamp things to. So I can clamp this in here. I've got it square. I'll go ahead and punch my hole in the center. And then I can mark my bolt holes to bolt the piece down with you know, when it finally gets to location and gets set down on the concrete. So I can index those real easy, zip, 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 all done. So one of the problems that you have with a big mill like this is they're normally three phase, but this one has a phase converter on the back of it that it actually takes single phase 220 and turns it into three phase 220. So when I flip the switch and hear something that sounds like a little jet motor starting up, that's that little white box on the back. That's that's the phase. It's a rotary phase converter, kind of like a little like a little generator, I guess it is. So listen for that. That's the phase converter. I haven't even turned the mill on yet, but that's what's running in the background. As far as setup on the machine, really, really easy. You know, the on-off switch is up here, and it's a forward or backward switch, depending on which way you flip it. You know, so you can make it run one way or the other. On the other side of the machine is where the high, low range, or neutral switch is, which works with a speed control up here. And I've just got it in the low range. So let's fire it up. Wrong way. <laughs> You can hear how slow this is running. Now, that's down to about 50 RPM. That's a little too slow. And there's 100. This does have an auto feed mechanism, which is this setup, right? This assembly right in here but there's something wrong with it. Like it's out of adjustment. Every time I turn it on, it just shuts itself right back off again. But what I've found is just a little hand weight. You don't have to pull on it. The drill's nice and sharp. Just the weight of your hand on it. Let the drill do its job. And it just sits there and works itself down in. You look underneath, you can see the chips. Oh yeah, glasses. Another good feature with the bridge port, you can see the handle for pulling the pulling it down all the way up here. Now I'm all the way down against metal down in here. This will release and come up and you can reset it. So you can keep moving it back and forth wherever you need to be rather than try to reach all the way around. You might want to turn your sound down on your computer just a little bit. Little shot of cutting oil on it. And that'll keep it happy for a few minutes.
was coming off as it was cutting and working great. I was putting cutting oil in it. Now all of a sudden, it stopped making noise. What's up with that? See, what's happened is the, chi the curve has gotten deep enough where every time I would bring the bring the hole saw back out again and it would bring some of the chips with it well now the curve is deep enough where the chips are staying in the bottom of the hole so as the saw is actually turning and trying to cut all those chips that are stuck down in the bottom of the curve are acting like little ball bearings they're just rolling around inside there keeping the teeth from going all the way down inside so back it off get the air hose poof poof And of course, you should always be wearing your safety glasses. Closing your eyes doesn't really help, but put your glasses on, put a face shield on, something like that. So let's get back to it. And just nice and clean and pretty, nice square edges, you know, straight. So I'll come in and grind this just a little, just to get shiny metal. I'll flip it over, grind it on the bottom, bevel it just a little bit. So when I set my tube down inside here, I can get a nice clean weld on the top, get a nice clean weld on the bottom. The dish will be set up on top of the pipe that I put in. Good to go. Build, build, build. Build it up from there. So that's why I like using the bridge port for hole saws, big hole saws, you know, index and stuff, drilling with it. You know, it's, it's so much cleaner, neater, more precise. You can lower that table down. You know, this table is a lot lower than the, the table on the, on the drill press is, so I don't have to pick these big heavy plates up as high. You know, nice machine. Glad to have it here. So I'm going to go ahead and change this out, get this hole saw off here and get the right size drill bit that I need so I can drill my holes in the corners to bolt everything down. You guys are gonna hit that subscribe button that's right down there so you can keep track of what I'm doing. And if you get the chance, pop out to my website, see what's going on out there, maybe sign up for my newsletter. I'll see you guys later. So you're probably wondering, why is he using the mill? instead of just a plain old bandsaw? Well, that's a really good question, actually.